the diamond sutra the oceanic presence a buddha is an oceanic presence there is a vast difference between an oceanic presence and the presence of the individual river the first thing a buddha is not he does not exist as an individual all the turbulence and discordance has dissolved in totality therefore he cannot be bored fed up and all those normal things that are insignia of ordinary human being first of all first you have to be bold the more you are when i say the more you are means the more you exist as ego ego sense the more you will feel bold the less you are the less bold you will be that is the reason why children are less bold than the older people have you not observed it children are almost not bored at all they go on playing with the same toys they go on running after the same butterflies they go on running after the same butterflies they go on collecting the same seashells they are never bored children a child is still connected to the unknown this is how a child is and adult is if you want to be childlike then you have to inculcate develop the habits of a child normally you are bored you get fed up very fast doing the same thing again and again you become fed up but the child is never fed up you can do as an exercise as a practice as a meditation for instance eating the same thing for breakfast lunch and dinner you will say that same food to eat three times per day you will feel bored you will feel bored because you exist as ego if you exist as consciousness if you exist as river if you exist as flow you will remember a river is not stationary consciousness is not stationary you are river is constantly flowing heraclitus says you cannot enter the same river twice what is river by there are two shores that bind that create a river bed and between these two shores on the river bed water flows is river bed river or the two shores river no shores are stationary the river bed is stationary but that which flows between the two that flows between the two shores on the river bed is water it is constantly flowing each moment and it is not stationary so too is human consciousness ego is fixed 
does not move at all. So if you can understand and identify yourself with consciousness, then you will not be bored. Sometimes people ask me, I met you last time. Oh, really you met me last time but I was not here. So people feel that something is wrong with my memory that I do not remember that I met him last time when I visited the city. You understand it you in your own way and I am responding in my way. I am consciousness and consciousness is constantly moving, never stationary. The air that you breathe, next moment that air is not available. Time is flow. So when you eat food in the morning, that food become the part of your digestive system and after the process of digestion completed it became the part of your alchemical process it is giving you it has become part of your energy so when next time you are eating the same food are you the same person? Ego will say, yes, I am the same person, but consciousness will never say that. Because much water has flown from under the river. Under the bridge, much water has flown. It is not the sea. The water you have met. A moment before is not there anymore, it has flowed, it has overflowed and it has gone to another place. Not a stationary. Your consciousness is not a stationary, it keeps on flowing. If your focus or the guest art changes from that which is fixed in you, to that which is a flow. No thought remains for more than a few seconds. Most of you have Facebook accounts. Just open a Facebook page, a message appears on your timeline from someone who you have subscribed. Observe how long that message remains on the screen. Not more than 10 seconds. If your account is very active, there is a constant flow. No message will remain on your timeline or screen for more than 10 to 15 seconds. After 10 seconds, another message pops up. This is and you never feel bored because you are sitting down with your Facebook page open every 10 second a new message appears you consider it as normal but when it comes to consciousness you feel it is fixed. The moment you feel it is fixed, ego has come in. And with ego will come problems. Have you not noticed that you can go on and tell the child the same story over and over again? As an adult, you may feel bored telling the same story again, but the child is never free. Board. And he keeps on asking you the same Goldilocks, same stories every night. After listening to it, he insists repeating it again and again and again. 
And whenever you meet him again, he will ask you to tell him the same story that he loved so dearly. Why a child is not born? Because child is still connected to the existence. The freshness of the consciousness is still pulsating in him. He does not exist as ego since. The ego has not evolved in him as yet. The ego is the factor that creates boredom. It is the way boredom comes into existence. Animals are not bored. They go on eating the same food every day. Trees are not bored as they bear the same leaves, same flowers and same fruits every year when the season comes in. What novelty is there in life of animals and trees that as a human being you lack. The rose bush goes on producing the same rose flower year in and year out. And the bird goes on singing the same song every morning and every evening. The cuckoo goes knows not many notes, just a single note. It goes on repeating it again and again. To you it is monotonous but not to the cuckoo. But neither a single animal is bored, nor a single tree. Nature knows nothing of boredom. Why? Because in nature ego ceases to exist. The trees and animals are not bored because mind has not yet developed. You have a mind developed. Mind says, I have to eat the same thing again. Here, first of all, if you want to come out of that consciousness, you have to remember that you are constantly changing every moment as you are consciousness, as you are energy. You are flowing. So you have started looking at the thing in a different way. You are a screen on which things keep on happening like a Facebook screen when the app is opened. Not more than 10 seconds a message remains on the screen. Have you ever noticed such a minute thing? You are worried about so many big things, but the minute things that have, are happening around you moment to moment, you do not observe. The moment you observe, how could that be possible? You put on a television channel and no scene remains for more than 10 to 12 seconds. That is it time limit of a particular scene to remain unless you put your screen in a stationary mode. Then the same thing will remain as long as your system is on. And even in that case, if the, your laptop or the television set realizes that there is no one to operate it, it goes into sleep mode. You have already created a screen saver and that screen saver will keep on. First, it will go into sleep mode. The, the screen saver will come. It has a limit. You have set the time limit for it and after that even the screen saver will disappear and 
the screen will go into a sleep mode. A Buddha's mind operates like that. A child's mind operates like this. When you keep these things constantly on your surface screen or desktop of the mind, not that your desktop your mind always operates not operates from the desktop mode your desktop is too busy it's readily available memory that is in computer technology we use the term RAM readily available memory is very small. You have to learn to expand the RAM of your mind, the operating capacity, readily available memory of your brain so that it can be expanded. And when you find that your computer is becoming slower, Operating slow, that means too many things are open on the screen, even and then it is consuming the battery also, the battery charge. So, I learned a great secret on one of the trips when I went, my friend, the young person. He told me, Uncle, let me look at your phone. So when I gave it to him, I said, What he is looking at my phone? So he said, Open it. I opened it. Then he showed me, Uncle, you know how many screens are open on your phone? And each screen will be consuming a battery charge. And your battery will run down fast. I said, Yes, the battery runs down fast. He said that, that as soon as you are finished with one screen or the screens, so each time when you open your system, whether it is iPhone, any kind of a smartphone, iPad, laptop, you just close those screens that were open. So battery will not be consumed. And you know this simple technique, but you have not used this technique in your own natural computer. How many screens are open on a day-to-day -day basis? That girl's screen is open, this girl's screen is open, that restaurant screen is open. You have to close off all those screens consciously on a day-to-day -day basis. Once you make an effort, it will start happening. Buddha closes his screens on a moment-to-moment. -moment. So, as far as the technology is concerned, you are a Buddha of technology. But when it comes to your mind, you fail to realize that you are consciousness constantly moving. You cannot keep the same screen open all the time. So Buddha is never bored. But Jesus is never bored. When a particular screen is open, what does it mean? The ego has not dissolved. Many, each screen represents a level of ego. Each screen is an ego screen. So many screens are open, many ego screens are open. And then you got to be bored. You got to be fed up with your life. And when ego dissolves, into the ocean because each ego is an individuality and with the dissolution of ego 
a Buddha becomes oceanic. The moment you remove that screen, its operating capacity is restored again. It has all the readily available memory, its RAM increases. And the reason that your operating system becomes slower is more screens are open. So unwanted screens never keep it open. Nature has not evolved it yet. Buddha has dropped it. Buddha and the nature are almost same. I said almost because there is only one difference between the two and this difference is that of a great significance. Only difference is that of awareness. Nature is without ego, but it is not aware. Your computer does not have an ego because you have consciously removed the screen. The screen that was open, you have closed it. But it does not have awareness, so it cannot change. You have to do it. A Buddha is without ego and plus he has something else. He is aware. So, no open screen plus awareness. An existence has no ego but there is complete absence of awareness. Man exists on the contrary only as ego and Buddha exists as egoless or beyond ego. Once you know you are not there, who is going to be bored? Who is going to be fed up? That is why I come every morning and go on answering your questions and go on eating the same breakfast every morning and I am not good. Same breakfast, same ingredients. You ask the child what to make for breakfast, will tell you the same thing again and again. Will tell you every night to tell him the same story, same Goldilocks story, same other stories. I don't remember because I don't have to tell anybody those stories now. So I am not bold and I cannot be. For almost 25 years, I have not tasted boredom. 25 years and now I have completely forgotten if there exists something like boredom I have to speak about it because I have to prepare the breakfast table for you so I have to talk about your thing what kind of things you carry what kind of things you like so boredom is always on to your screen the second thing, the questions are never the same. They can never be because they come from a different people. When a particular virus erupts or there is a particular virus. Now virus is one. When it attacks the different people, it is the anatomy and physiology of an individual differs from that of the other. When the same virus will affect your anatomy and physiology, it will create different effect. You go to a furniture store, and three of your friends go and buy the same design, same color of fabric, living room set and bring it. Their furniture set is same, 
same color same design but the and when it is put in the ambience in their living room it looks different so when the virus attacks you and it comes in your living room it finds a different ambience so it's never seen so when you ask me a question every different people can ask the same question but question emerges from your innerness and inner innerness of each individual differs your decorum your ambience the color of your walls the deco on your walls the kind of inner decoration that you have set up will differ from that of the other yes three of you bought the same design same color living room set but it is not necessary that all the the walls of the three friends will have the same color someone may like to have this color of painting on the wall the other one that different kind of pieces of art are there displayed so when a question comes evolves out of different persons and not only that so when it it appears to me it comes to me as a different because i see the whole innerness of it the question evolves out of different people and not only that man is consciousness in the seed form the blossoming has not yet happened however the question may be arising out of unconsciousness or subconsciousness and e the unconscious and the subconscious of each person differs from that of the other just as your inner system differs from that of the other so this virus will affect you differently and the effect of this virus will be different on you than the other yes sometimes there may be a resemblance just as sometimes you have asked a question and somebody had asked the questions words may be the same and you remember when there is a season of spring every rose plant will have the rose blossom when there is an outburst of a particular virus it affects the whole area so when there is an outburst of questions everyone asks question more or less of a similar nature i know what happens the kind of questions i have been asked two persons are so different from each other because of the layers of consciousness then how can they ask the same question even if the words are same even if the construction of the question is same yet i would like you to remember that can that they can never be seen i can see it i can see the difference remember each individual has his own uniqueness to call those questions the same is disrespectful to individual uniqueness i respect your questions they are not seen each question has nuances of its own colors of its own and for you 
And for this, you need very penetrating eyes to see the difference. Difference in the questions of the two people. Otherwise, you may not be able to see it. When you look around and you see all the trees are green, do you think it is the same green? If you find, then you do not know how to look at color. Ask a painter and he will say each tree has a different hue of green color. Each tree has a different hue of green color. All different shades and hue and nuances. No two trees are the same green. Just look around and you will see, yes, each green is a different green, different hue. So are the questions. And even if the same person asks the question again and again, then too it cannot be seen. Because you go on changing, your energy is not static. You cannot step the same river twice and you cannot meet the same person again because man's consciousness is a flow. You cannot ask this question tomorrow because there will be no more the same person tomorrow. The water of the Hudson will have flowed. Much water would have gone under this, gone down the stream. This moment it is relevant. Tomorrow it may not be relevant. Something else may surface in the consciousness. No two persons will ask the same question and not even the same person can ask the same question again because the person goes on changing. The person is like a flame, constantly changing. The person who is asking a question is a flow that constantly gushing out the water Depending on the flow of the water, you know how much water is pumped out of this river bed every moment. But again and again, you have to look very deep. Two questions can never be seen. I am always thrilled by the questions whenever these are asked. It gives me a new challenge. To not only look into the question, but look into the person who has asked the question. And I respond to the questioning mind. I always wonder, how do you manage to ask the same question again and again without being bored? And you get bored with the same, eating the same food again and again. Each question comes like a challenge to me. It becomes a challenge to me. It is a great adventure with each question. The master creates a new opening. If you are not closed and you hear, then a new passage is created for you. Whether you will remain always closed or someday you will listen with open ears, your heart a little bit. It is a matter of time and struggle as well. There is a wrestling that goes on between the master and the disciple on a constant basis, like a constant fight. The master is trying to give one cuff. He is trying to send you a message as a cuff. like a boxer's punch. But you are accustomed in saving yourself from those punches. So sometimes 
in an unconscious moment the master's punch hits you and then he can you can get tko situation technical knockout there is a wrestling that goes on between the master and the disciple on a constant basis and the disciple cannot win it has never been heard that he can win he can postpone he can go on saving himself if he is versatile in the art of boxing but master is a master he will look at the situation when you are unconscious and that's time he gives a punch and you get a technical knockout it has never been heard that a disciple can win he can postpone he can delay but he cannot win and the more you delay the more your defeat becomes imminent the more you delay i can assure you you are coming closer to your tko technical you know what is this word tko technical knockout a term that is used in boxing very much it is a technical knockout i am encroaching on your being in different ways you just go on sitting there with your eyes closed closed eyes and closed heart once you are there your subconscious goes on absorbing all that your conscious mind fails to absorb you just remain there and that is, that alone is enough you just be there sooner or later one day the message will reach you like a strong punch and your conscious mind will get a tko technical knockout how long can the disciple remain closed how long can a boxer avoid the punches that are constantly happening that constantly being hurled by the other boxer the master boxer it is said if a man persists in his folly he becomes wise one day you persist and then one day in spite of you you will hear this is the reason buddha continued for 45 years day in and day out all masters continue speaking every morning every evening year in and year out i do not recall for how long i have been speaking but in every week there are minimum 3 videos posted on youtube make them available so if there are if it is erroneous to say if so week has fifth, the year has 52 weeks and three videos per week so that means 100 and 59 videos are posted per year and if it is 10 years you can multiply it you will get the message on the when there is no question in your mind never before that how can you get the message that there is no answer how can you get the message that there is no answer if you have questions you get the very question presupposes an answer no sooner that i am finished with an answer than another question surfaces the question is the search for the answer and question has taken it for granted that the answer exists 
otherwise how will there be a question the question cannot exist on its own question is one pole an answer is another each depends on the answer or at least on the possibility of answer that it may have around it and then one day you realize there is no longer any question in you only that day will the message be heard that there are no more answers the moment your questions exhaust my answers to the exhaust and the day you will see that neither you have asked nor i have answered there has been utter silence all that questioning and answering has been like a dream that is why it is said buddha never spoke transformation happens when there is only silent communion great scriptures happen then and whatsoever happens is sublime whatsoever happens is sublime it is said for diamond sutra subuti did not ask any question and buddha did not answer yet still anand reports the entire Diamond Sutra. When you ask a question, the master has to answer. That is the only way to help you to get out of that situation, get rid of that question. Remember, all answers are not answers. Instead, these are devices. My answers are not answering your questions. because i know perfectly well that there are no questions all questions are false you have dreamt about them and when you ask i respect you that you have asked a question and i answer my answer is just a respect for you and my answer is a device it will help you to see the question that the question by and by will start to disappear and all the answers are addressed to the questioning mind these are the devices for the questioning mind to attain to silence one day suddenly you will be awake with no questions that day you will see i have not answered a single question nothing can be answered because there is not even a single question in existence existence exists without any question and when questions disappear that is mystery existence is a mystery to be lived not a riddle to be solved existence is mystery love it live it be it the master can continually astounds the disciples through his dew drop freshness beauty and the fragrance in the early morning light and still the disciple remains blind dead lame yet unaffected all this except for the brief moment those brief moments when you awake, you wake up from your slumber that is enough those brief moments are the hope of the resurrection in those brief moments the master will enter you like the rays of the sun all they need a very tiny opening a very thin opening and the sun will sun rays penetrate those brief moments will become bigger one day and then one day you will find those brief moments 
have won over and taken possession of you. Even if, even if for a single moment there is a contact between the master and you, it is enough. It is more than enough. Certainly more than enough. Even that is small insight will grow like a wild fire in you. That the small spark is going to burn your whole mind utterly to its very roots. Then out of that ash, one day will happen your resurrection. Then one day out of that ash will happen your resurrection.